Good morning, good morning, good morning. We've got some big news. First off, I got a new hat. Look, yeah. Uh, I think that's it for big news, right? No, no other large purchases no. lately? Oh, okay, come here. Just, just rotate with me. Look, look what we got. Basically, the Highlander, while it served our family very, very well, uh, is just at a point where it lacks enough capability that we decided it's time to get rid of the Highlander and get Kendall back into a truck with four wheel drive. So this is Kendall's new truck. This is 2020, so this is a 2006 Dodge Ram 3500, so it will tow. But the biggest thing is, and we need your help on this, in the comments below, we need a name for this truck. We're going, I mean, it's blue, it's rhino lined, it's a 3500, it's a mega cab. I'm trying to think of what else I can tell you that would help you pick the perfect name for this truck. All of our vehicles are named. This is the first time we've allowed other people into this process, so you could be the one who names it. And if you name it, we'll uh, give you a shout out in our next video. And yep, big news, this is our new truck. Uh, yeah, so we are setting up forms today for our corner piece on our wall. So we're gonna show you that, how to attach rammed earth to an existing wall, as well as we are putting in a doorway for the first time. So we actually had a chat with a uh, sire wall yesterday because I had a couple of questions. They kind of gave us some pretty good direction on that and we're going to jump into that and get it all squared away today. We may start ramming and just get the first few lifts done today, but we'll see, so check it out. A lot of people have been asking and curious, how do you connect two pieces of wall, one wall that's done to a new piece of rammed earth? Um, we're doing that as well as we're putting in a doorway. So we're gonna show you both of those things right now. First, um, what we're gonna do is we have this corner piece that will be connected to rammed earth that will come out from here and go this direction. So this, this corner piece right here is actually going to turn a corner. We're gonna have a 90 degree, and then there's gonna be another rammed earth wall here that will go to here, and this will be a doorway. So what we're gonna do, what we did, is this foam up here. Yeah, you can see it goes this way and then turns 90 degrees. So that means we have continuous foam touching all the way through the walls. And now what we're gonna do, we're gonna take the foam from this wall, or that's gonna go in the center of this wall, we're gonna butt it right up against this foam here, and then we're going to continue it through and ram this corner. So essentially what we did is we took our form and we set it against the existing wall. And then on the back side, we're gonna have 45 degree braces, turnbuckles, that will apply a ton of pressure up against this wall to keep it nice and tight. Now, after talking with Sirewall, it's gonna bow out. Like it's just one of those things that is gonna happen. So to mitigate the seeing it bowing out, uh, what we're gonna do is actually put a chamfer in here. It will make it so you won't notice as it bows out. It they, will trick your eye. It'll trick your eye into thinking it's flat. As far as the inner wall goes right here, it's less, it's a lot less of a problem because this 90 degrees right here, even if it bows out, you're really not gonna see it. The only time it'll be a problem is if we were to hang cabinets right here and need it, you know, think, assume it's a 90 degrees and then we go to hang the cabinets and realize that the wall's bowed out. So unless you're hanging cabinets, it's really not that big of an issue because you, you won't be able to detect it with your eyes only if you're really, really measuring. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna brace the other side here, come over on this side. So these nifty little things are called turnbuckles. They attach to the wood they go into a base here and then you can turn this to tighten it and put pressure up against. So what we're gonna do to mitigate it bowing out is a couple of things. One, we're gonna put turnbuckles every two feet. Every two feet all the way up, all the way to the very top one, we're gonna have a big long one coming out. And what'll happen is we're gonna tighten those down so it's putting as much pressure against the existing wall as we can possibly get. Then we are also going to take uh, what's called a strong back. We're gonna take another metal beam. We're gonna drive it down through here, up all the way over, almost like, a, like two pillars with a connection at the top. And then we can actually drive wedges 
between the strong back and the existing form. And what that'll do is apply even more pressure going this way. So that way um, the bow that the, the wall or the, these forms when they bow out due to the pressure from the ram ring will be, it'll be less and less and less. So our goal is a quarter inch. I was told they can bow up to a half inch. And if you get it as little as an eighth of an inch, that's like a major accomplishment. So I think our goal right now is if we can get quarter inch, quarter inch should be our goal, right? If it, if it bows less than a quarter inch, we've won. We've done something good. And then as we kind of perfect, because I don't know how strong these need to be, but as we perfect this process, our goal ultimately is to get it down to where we have an eighth inch of bowing out, because you're always gonna have bow. Now, the reason is, come here, look at this. This wall is dry, right? But just like these cold joints, you can't see this, but if you run your hand up, it actually catches on that cold joint because the cold joint is sticking out by about a 16th of an inch. It's about a 16th of an inch proud, and that's just the nature of rammed earth. So what happened was this bottom part cured, and, it, and um, when it did, it shrinks just ever so slightly. And so when you do the next lift, your forms are already bowed out a little bit. So when you, when you ram on top of it, you're always gonna have that cold joint be just a little bit proud. Same concept over here. We have a finished wall and we're putting new rammed earth up against it. So that new rammed earth is always gonna be a little bit proud of the existing wall. So hopefully that makes sense. If you have more questions, uh, hopefully it'll make sense as we kind of get more of it going. But if you have more questions, ask us in the comment below. And when we do our next wall where we're attaching two pieces of existing rammed earth, we'll try to address those questions as best we can. So yeah, that's what we're doing. The other thing we are doing that's different with this wall is this is going to be a door frame, a doorway. Um, when I called and I asked uh, Sirewall how to do those door frame details, Basically, it's gonna work the exact same way as a window, but instead of filling in the bottom, we leave it. So if you come over here, essentially our door frame will look just like this, except this steel will go all the way to the ground. The only reason we didn't go all the way to the ground is because these, I didn't buy these long enough. And when we cut them, they were just a little bit short. For the doorway, we're gonna run steel all the way down and all the way to where the top of the doorway is. And that's where it will, um, I mean, the steel will continue through because we'll, we'll brace it with other things. And then when we go to put in our door frame, the door frame will butt up against this and you'll actually put in nailers here on either side and then nail the door frame into those or into the, the steel, but all the steel will be covered by wood detailing. What's that called? Trim. Trim. It, it, it'll be trimmed out. So you'll have your doorway here and you'll still be able to see the exposed rammed earth. A lot of it, you know, some of it will be covered by trim, but you'll still be able to see quite a bit of it, which I think is kind of cool to be able to like walk through a rammed earth opening. I, I just think it'll look neat. So yeah, but see how the foam comes all the way to the edge. That foam will come all the way to the edge of the door frame. So there'll be minimal thermal bridging. That's what our doorway is going to look like. Kind of figuring this out as we go. Oh yeah, it'll actually kind of look like this, except wider apart. Yeah, it'll be further apart. Yep, that's right. Yeah, and then I got to figure out what we're going to do for the top. Kind of cross that bridge when we get there. So when we first put these up and just sort of pushed them as hard as we could, there was about a quarter inch gap. I could, well, actually about a five eighths gap because I could fit this five eighths piece of rebar through there all the way up there. Well, now if you look at it, oh, that gap is a little more than I think I want it to be. We had that problem with these two forms last time. Did we? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Remember? Well, let's look, how did it turn out? Yeah, it's not bad. You can see the form line, but it's all right. All right. Yeah, so that's good to go. Um, I'm embracing the uniqueness of it's the beauty and the imperfections yes yeah so yeah that gap is now 
about an eighth of an inch, which means it will probably push out to a quarter or even three eighths. So that's why we're gonna put the strong back in. I think we're on to rebar and chamfers. Okay. So we'll grind, we'll drill. We don't have epoxy, but we can go get some or just wait until, like I said, we can drill the holes, stick the rebar in it, and then come back with epoxy later. It's fine. Uh, the other thing we can do is uh, cut the, or put in the spacers and the steel channel. We need to figure out how tall we want that door. I need to look at the plans, but I think, I wanna say it's a big door. I think we'll call it good. Nice. Mm. So we'll just throw a little piece of concrete patch over that. The rest of it should be fine. short work of it. Uh, yeah, that's not the right size bit. I thought maybe I'd be able to make it bigger, but after doing that, I think it's just better to get the 5 8 bit. Uh, so we'll go get the 5 8 bit to be able to drill in for the concrete. We'll get the epoxy. So it sounds like we're running into town. It's noon. Do you guys want to do a lunch break, work on a little bit of homeschooling while I run into town real quick? Sure. Okay. All right, we're back. We got our drill bit. We do not have our adhesive because apparently it's impossible to find. Home Depot didn't have it. Lowe's didn't have it. The local brick store didn't have it. They had it, but they didn't have the like gun that dispenses it. So it's basically useless. So I don't know. We're going to have to figure it out or get it online or do something. So we'll get that figured out. But now we can pre-drill all of our holes in our rammed earth as well as re-drill the holes in the concrete to the correct size for the 5 8 rebar put all the rebar in get everything set put up the other forms because now our um glue down boards are dry cured and yeah kind of go from there i think that's about it and we still have plenty of time today so let's get it done we put horizontal rebar in every two feet so what i'm going to do is just uh measure every two feet I'll put a little scratch. Where it's supposed to be. All right. We have our marks. Yep. I think that's it. Cool. Let's do it. This is the first time I'm drilling into rammed earth. I'm a little nervous because I'm drilling a hole in our wall that we just put here. <laughs> right. Well, I gotta say, I didn't feel much of a difference between drilling into the concrete and drilling into the rammed earth. You want a nice tight fit. Um, so I think it'll be all right. We just have to, what I'll probably do is just cut the rebar a little short and make the U's bigger. So they'll still overlap. So yeah, I'll just bring it in here bring it to about like here, put it in so there's enough room to swing, hammer it in, and then make the U's that, that big. So it'll use a little bit more rebar, but it's okay. Let's do chamfers, cause that won't take long. And that's kind of a pain when the rebar's in the way. There's mold on the chamfers, is that a problem? Uh... No. It's probably fine, right? Seriously, I am so paranoid about mold because everything here molds. We're from Southern California where everything's dry. Nothing molded out there. Yeah. 
chamfers are done. We need to put in the spacers first and the first thing of metal. Then we'll put in the second thing. Oh. Oh. The chamfers are supposed to go in. On the spacers. It wouldn't be an adventure without a few mistakes. You got me there, Chica. Do we need to chisel out more of the rammed earth? No. I think our only hope for getting this right is to pull that spacer out. Definitely in there tight. That's for sure. Now we're good. Oh, and that's a lot better than it was the last time. Nice. There. We're going to put in our last two pieces of rebar and then get at least one form wall up and then kind of see how we're feeling because it's getting hot, we're getting tired. We'll see. Get what we can done. Ready for this? I'm ready. Frog? There's a frog. There's a frog. Here, just looking forward to it sitting there. Hop the other way, dude. There you go. Go that there. way. Here, yeah. if you lift this side, I can probably get that side. Okay. One, two. Yeah, probably. Look at this. It looks so good. So now, will you go inside there and tell me when I'm on the line? Yeah. They're perfect. Right there? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go up and attach those two. On top. On top. Now this wall can go nowhere. Yeah, I can see from here how the wall tweak or like does this. Yeah. So for the majority of the wall, it's touching at the very top. There's about an eighth inch gap. And at the very bottom, there's an eighth inch gap. But that's that bowing that comes with rammed earth. I'm done. 418. Yep. All right, let's be done. All right, we're going to call it a day. We got a lot of good stuff done. But for now, I'm going to take a break. Thanks for joining our adventure. <laughs>